Well, man, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't be doing my job unless I asked. But uh, obviously, there is some bad blood right now between uh, you know the band and, and Tony, uh, your uh, your longtime bassist. Is that still a thing going on? I mean, have you talked about reconciliation or anything like that right now, man? Um, you know, it's all on his end. Um, I I don't see anything happening, you know, between me and him in the near future. Um, for some reason, he's got a lot of problems with me and doesn't like me and, and for whatever reason and to the point where, you know, I've even offered him money to to use the Static X name. You know, I've offered to give him some, you know, share of the profits for doing nothing and he declined it, you know. Man. And, you know, I haven't talked to him in a long time because he told me he never wanted to talk to me again, so... I'm like, all right, <laughs> whatever, have a nice life. I, I don't really understand it. I don't understand where he's coming from. You know, I, I don't know why he would want to let Static X die. Um, you know, I don't. I'm, I'm keeping it alive, even though it's, you know, I'm just called Wayne Static now. Right. I'm still keeping Evil Disco alive. And, you know, I, I worked really hard for a long time to make things happen. So, um, it just doesn't make any sense. But, you know, you're right, man. I mean, you just got to keep moving on and, and, and doing the music that uh, you're used to doing and what the fans are wanting. And and just, uh, you know, I think you're you're taking the high road, and that's that's what it's all about right there, man. Well, you know, the two, another thing, I mean, the fans know what's going on. They, they, they know, you know, that, like, basically, I was Static X, you know. Right. It's like the Nine Inch Nails thing, you know. Trent Reznor, that's Nine Inch Nails, you know. Oh yeah. Al Jordan is Ministry. Dave Mustaine is Megadeth. You know, it's it's like one of those kind of things, and the fans all know that. So, um, you know, they're going to come out and, and get the same kind of show that I've always given them, no matter what other guys are next to me on the stage. You know, it's still going to be awesome. Right on, man. Well, you got a good attitude about it, man, and so I give you props for that for sure, man. Uh, you mentioned uh, Evil Disco. <laughs> Dude, I think that's like that's a cool term right there because I was my one of my next questions was I was going to you know talk about being you know the band being labeled as new metal or groove metal or industrial metal and all of that but uh, evil disco is the perfect <laughs> the perfect just you know description of what Static X is all about. Who came up with that? I'm sure it was you, right? Yeah, you know we were just sitting around in an interview and. You know, back in the old days, everyone was always like, you know, the first thing they say would be like, describe your music. You know, like this was like before Death Trip even came out. You know? Right. And and I, I got so tired of like trying to categorize it and everything. So I kind of jokingly said, "It's evil disco." You know, <laughs> and you know the the interviewer, whoever it was, I can't even remember now. It was like so long ago, but. He was very perplexed, you know, <laughs> like, what? <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, and then it just kind of stuck, you know, it, it totally makes sense, you know, because it's, you can't describe uh, the music that I've done over the years in terms of other bands because there's too many influences and there's too many different sounds in there to just pigeonhole it, you know. And even within one album, like, you know, take Wisconsin Death Trip, you know, there's some songs on there that are super heavy, you know, almost like almost metal. And, and then there's songs that are just total like tranced out or trances emotion and um, December and, you know, just Love the, whole, the gamut. Like I've, I've never felt like I've been, you know, pigeonholed into any one certain category. So the evil disco thing lets me do anything that i want you know I, i've i created evil disco so i can do what i want hell yeah man now do you even like regular disco music have you i mean i do actually yeah um I, I i love dance music yeah and it was a huge huge influence on me in you know the mid 90s especially um when prodigy fat of the land came out i mean dude that album just slammed oh you yeah know? And in, there were so many great electronic bands at that time period that were just so fresh and doing this new kind of stuff I'd never heard before. You know, Chemical Brothers, Crystal Method, all that stuff was 
like just blowing my mind back then. So that had a huge influence, and I really thought Static X, in my mind, was going to sound more like a prodigy kind of thing. Right. And then, you know, again to go back, my producer Ulrich was the one who kind of reined it in and said, "No, man, you guys need you need to like." make it more live sounding so uh, the record sounds exactly how these guys sound when you play live and he was right you know because uh, otherwise it, it could have ended up sounding like you know just some electronic mess nightmare that you know <laughs> that a, a lot of bands end up sounding like when they try to mix you know um, guitars and electronic sounds and I think you know we did it in the right way and and, and, and it is true I mean you you go out and listen to our songs live and you close your eyes and you think you're listening to the CD. You know? Right. It's trancy, very trancy for sure, man. Yep. Well, uh, I was going to ask you, you know, with uh, with that direction, with that in mind, you know, uh, I guess it, it hasn't it hasn't been as um, as big as it was just about a year or two ago. But this whole dubstep thing started to come out. I think Corn Corn did uh, yep. e- even did some dubstep stuff. Did you ever think about doing anything like that, or do you even like it? Um, I don't like it as much as I I still li- like the stuff that was happening in the '90s. You know, right. Uh, and ultimately, you know, I think it is just a trend and, you know, I try not to follow trends and I just try to do my own thing. And, you know, at this point, um, I don't really listen to other bands to get inspiration for music, you know, cause I've already created this evil disco thing. So I kind of work in, inside my own realm, right. inside my own head, you know, <laughs> and I, and that also helps my music be timeless and and not fall into any categories because I, I don't really listen to any new music these days. You know, I just I I, I put on stuff like that I listened to in high school, a journey and right <laughs> like that. Yeah. You know, like that's sort of the classic rock. You know, that's what I'm into <laughs> when I listen to music. That sounds so, like that sounds like me. There you go. As I've got yeah. Journey, I've got everything from Journey to Pantera in my uh, personal collection. So yeah, yeah, exactly. Yep, all, all the best stuff from back in those those years. 